There's three types of people. One person is just deathly afraid of credit cards because they heard way too many horror stories from people. The credit card is the cigarette of the financial world. There's no upside, it kills you. The second type of person is just straight YOLO in it all day, every day, throwing things on that credit card. Doesn't have any money, doesn't matter because you got that magic card. And the third person is smart, using the credit card, paying it off, getting to use points, and going on trips, or booking hotels, or buying things basically for free because they know how to manage their credit card correctly. Let me teach you how to be that third person. This video here is gonna have some of the most important information that you guys are going to need. And if you like information like this and you want more of it, please go ahead and like, subscribe, share this video with your friends. People that are in a bunch of debt started with these mistakes, especially the last mistake. A lot of people don't understand it and it absolutely kills their credit score and it takes forever to get that credit score back up once you've done this last mistake. So the first mistake with credit cards would be the mistake of not having one. Now I don't know if it's because you heard too many horror stories or because you're listening to Dave Ramsey who most of the time says the right things but a lot of what he has to say is kind of outdated. There's no upside, it kills you. His main argument against credit cards is if you don't have a credit card, then you can't go into credit card debt. The problem is if you don't have a credit card, you also won't have a credit score. And nowadays, Dave, you need a credit score. Maybe you didn't need a credit score back in 1900. Somebody please smack me. But the world is different now today in 2021. You and your little brain have figured out that that makes sense. Think about it like this. If you're gonna go buy a house, you most likely are not gonna have $500,000 to buy that house in cash. So you're gonna need to get a loan from either the bank or mortgage company or something. How will that bank or mortgage company know that you're somebody that they can trust? The answer to that, of course, is your credit history. What your credit history is showing is that you can take money as a loan and then you can pay it back and that you do pay it back. And if you consistently do this over time, your credit score goes up, basically saying that you're a more trustworthy person when it comes to money. Dave Ramsey says something like, it's not a credit score, it's a debt score or something weird like that. And yeah, that's pretty much it. You can take on debt and you can pay it back. That's the whole point here. There are going to be times in your life where you need this credit score. If you're gonna ever buy a car or if you're gonna even rent an apartment or if you're gonna buy a house for sure, a credit score makes things a lot easier. So your best bet is going to be to research which card is best for you. I made a video on that here. And so you guys can check that out after this video because once you know all the mistakes that you shouldn't do, then you'll be better equipped when you go get the card that's best for you. And just make sure right out the gate that you're monitoring that credit score monthly or at least every quarter or so. Credit Karma or some of these other ones are totally free. They'll let you know a pretty good average estimated number of where your credit score is. It's a very important thing to make sure and monitor that just in case so that if anything crazy happens where it goes down a bunch, you can check into that and make sure it doesn't hurt you over time. That credit score is the whole reason why we're getting this credit card. Mistake number two with credit cards is using the card with no plan to pay it off. And what we found in talking to the millionaires is some of them have a credit card and pay it off every month like you're talking about. Some people think that the card is just some magic card. I really want this really cool skateboard, but it's 500 bucks and I don't have $500, but I do have this card. I'll just put that money onto the credit card, get my skateboard, go be able to have fun with the skateboard, and then I'll worry about that payment later. That's dumber than a rock. The problem is that that payment doesn't just go away and you probably just aren't going to have an extra $500 next month if you don't have it this month pretty soon you're gonna to have to start paying interest on that $500. And usually with credit cards, it's an insane interest. That's not good, because if you miss a payment or two on that $500, pretty soon it's gonna be $600, then $700 and then it just keeps going from there. And this leads us to mistake number three, not tracking your expenses. Now, when you have something digital like a card, it's very, very tough to remember what your expenses were. You guys are probably too young, but I remember seeing my parents and they actually taught me how to balance a checkbook. Now, that was super old school and it took forever. What it did do is it showed you how many expenses you've had and where you're at. So literally, if you go to the supermarket, you spend 50 
$50, right then and there you write down minus 50. And so if you had $250 in your account, you'd go minus 50, now you're at 200. Now you know very, very quickly how much money you actually have. Nowadays, people just throw that card around like there's no tomorrow. You kind of are surprised at the end of the day. If you go to Chipotle for lunch and then you go to juice it up later on for a juice or something, and then at nighttime you guys go out, it's three or four days down the road and you forgot all the things that you paid for a while ago. If you're not tracking your expenses, they start to add up. Even if you know you have the money for it, maybe you forgot about that one expense that now puts you over because then we're kind of getting into the territory of mistake number two, which is where you're using the card without a way to actually pay it off. Stupid! A good tip in how to track your expenses is using the notepad on your phone or even just super old school and having a journal or a notebook and writing it down. Mistake number four is using a credit card that doesn't have good rewards or a good reward system. Nowadays, there's so many different cards to choose from. If you're gonna get a credit card and you just happen to get your first one through your bank, it may just be a starter credit card, one that gets you started and going, but after about a year, you can then apply for a better credit card. And by better credit card, what I mean is, instead of it just basically getting you like one point per dollar that you spend or that you pay off, there's a lot of credit cards that give you like twice the amount of points or they give you more points for travel or they give you crazy incentives on concerts and other things that you may actually care about more. I know for me, my favorite one has to do with travel. And when you get to pay off like a round trip vacation to Hawaii with your points, it's pretty awesome. So find the card that's gonna be best for you and your lifestyle, and that's just an added bonus to being a good credit card user. Mistake number five, which is the fee offsets what the actual rewards are for you. Let me explain. Some credit cards are totally free and every year you don't have to pay a fee and you get the rewards based on how much you spend and how much you pay off. Some of the more top tier credit cards, however, do have a fee. And some of them, it's a pretty substantial fee. Depending on how much you travel or depending on how much you need certain things for business or perks in certain ways to maybe take out a client, these fees may be totally acceptable and understandable for what you're doing. Like if you're gonna get a reward of $5,000 worth of travel by paying like $300 a year for a certain card, then yeah, it totally makes sense. So you're gonna need to assess what it is that you're buying, how often you're buying, how often you're gonna use the credit card, and then what rewards you'll actually use. Now for the final mistake, the one that a bunch of people mess up on, and it absolutely crushes their credit score. Mistake number six is closing your oldest credit card. Do not do that no matter what. This is one of the biggest problems that I have with Dave Ramsey because what he tells people that are in debt is to cut up their credit cards and to close out their account. A huge portion of the way that your credit score is formulated is how long you've had your credit. If you've only had credit open for six months, it's telling somebody down the road that you haven't had a lot of history with being loaned money and showing that you can pay it back. So what they're thinking is, all right, we'll give this person a little more time figuring it out before we give them real money. So if you are having a problem with using your credit card and, you just, and you're in somewhat of debt right now and you just need to pay it off and you need to stop spending with it, then I do agree with cutting up the credit card, but do not close it out. There's no reason why you can't just keep it open, but just never use it or just don't use it for a while. At least that piece of your credit score will be held up. A lot of people make this mistake because they get that starter credit card, which doesn't have great points and great reward. And so they say, okay, I'm gonna close that credit card and I'm gonna get a new one. It doesn't look bad on your credit score or credit history if you have up to about five different credit cards. You could really have as many credit cards as you want. So whatever credit card is your oldest one, just keep that safe. Don't use it if you don't want to, but do not close it out. It's the one that takes the longest to get that part of the score up because it's literally time. So if you close that credit card out, you're going to need at least two more years before a bank's going to feel comfortable giving you any money to even rent an apartment or something like that. Credit cards are an interesting subject and they can be somewhat scary, but if you avoid these mistakes and you do exactly what I said, you're going to be in a very good place financially. Making sure that your budget is on track, making sure that you're tracking these expenses and making sure that you're paying it off every single month, you're going to be in a very good place. And with that, not only will you have a high credit score, but you'll be be able to go on trips for free 
and you'll be able to do things that a lot of people can't do just because you're managing your money well.